Okay, we'll just uh, play a bit of this. Hey there, brethren. Tim here with another live fellowship with Brother Jeremy from Eternal Redemption. Say hi, Jeremy. <laughs> in, <laughs> in today's uh, broadcast, we're going to be discussing prayer and fasting uh, uh, and uh, easy believism and quick prayerism and hyper dispensationalism. One of my favorites. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to go ahead and uh, start with prayer and fasting. And I know Jeremy has a lot more, uh, has put a lot more study and more time into this subject than actually I have, so I'll let him go ahead and begin. Well, um, and I'm going to go back to my free preaching days because uh, this is where it all started with me. Um, the prayer and fasting thing is really become a become a cult-like practice nowadays. It's more forced upon people than what the scriptures actually say. You know, Paul really only mentioned it three times in his epistles. And, you know, and they will always resort back to uh, Jesus Christ saying, I think it's in Matthew 17, 21. Uh, let me read that to you real quick. It says right here, Matthew 17, 19. Uh, I'll start right here. It says, then came the disciples and said, I'm out. Told about casting out devils. And Jesus said unto them, because of the early, I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you, howbeit this goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Okay. Now, this is where all the charismatics and all the you know, the non-dispensational wing nuts will get all excited and say, see, see right there, if we pray and fast every day, you know, then we can move mountains. Yeah. No one you know. can. But what they're Only forgetting God. is that this is Old Testament. Okay. What's going on here? This is signs and wonders to the Jews. Okay. This has nothing to do with Christians today. All right. This is not this charismatic hebrew jebu nonsense that you can just pray and then starve yourself. And expect God to give you a million bucks. It's not going to happen. Okay. That's just not how it works. Fasting in the New Testament for a Christian. Basically, is when you come to you desperately want a prayer answered. God, I want this in Jesus' name. Okay. You don't have to do it longer than a day. Anything longer than a day. I, I never bother fast at all. Jesus healed my uh, left big toenail I prayed and I had faith and he healed it I cracked it uh, several ye 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 years ago it was a bad crack and anyway it's healed now uh, sometimes it's it's still sore but uh, yeah it's healed see I, I never never fast at all uh, you start getting, you, you can make yourself sick, okay? Yeah, it's unhealthy. Yeah. Um, and the charismatics will try to do the whole 40-day fast, you know, and stuff like that. Um, you're not God in the flesh, so stop trying to do that, okay? God had power while he was Jesus Christ. And, and, you don't and Jesus is in heaven, right? The second person of the Godhead is Jesus and always will be. Right, and always was, even at the beginning, right? So, you, most likely, it sounds like most likely you, you, you've got the uh, Godhead wrong, J Jeremy. You're frail, and you're going to die. And you say, well, Jesus Christ, yeah, well, Jesus Christ also was dead, buried, and was resurrected. So... Don't give me that nonsense either. Um, Jesus Christ was very God, very man. You're not. Okay, when you die, you're either going to go to one or two places, heaven or hell. So, That's right. you're not God, so stop trying to pin, pretend to be. And but, but, yeah, that's you'll hear that one a lot. And you'll hear a lot of churches nowadays, these church buildings, you know, 
they'll they'll try to push the whole fasting on you and try to say, oh, we all just need to fast this whole week, one week, all week. Um, that's cult like practices. Why are you fasting for a whole week when yeah, just I because don't they're doing it, you just go along the crowd? I mean, no, it's wrong. I don't I mean, agree. that's just that's religion, and you need to throw that out. Mm -hmm. I've so far in, try to say so far in my life I've never uh, come across a church uh, d d doing that. I wouldn't fast anyway. Oh, we all just need to fast this whole week, one week, all week. Um, that's cult like practices. Why are you fasting for a whole week when just because they're doing it, you just go along with the crowd? I mean, I mean that's just. That's religion, and you need to throw that out. Mm -hmm. Anything exactly. like that? What is that, Jeremy? Oh, I was just saying, you want to add anything to that? No, that's absolutely correct. I have um, I have a bunch of notes written out about uh, fasting ju just for this uh, podcast. And yeah, you know, fasting is really... When you're, you know, it's, uh, there's about, like, I guess, uh, overall, like, four different types of it. Yep. And, um, like, you know, one, of, like you said, one is for de in desperation of a prayer being answered, and then another one is giving your time to God, rather yep. than, uh, you know, pausing to go get a, um, to go get a meal. Someone is impersonating you and me in the comment section, and I have no idea how they're doing it. But whatever. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, they're 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 talking about the vigilant Christian for some crazy reason. They're like, whatever. But um, anyways, uh, the uh, the second type. Uh, but you know, when you want a prayer answered, you know, if you're really praying on it, something you need desperately, you're not really gonna um, go for food. And I actually have a perfect example of this because the other. Uh, just yesterday, I was at I was at work, and I, I was doing that exact thing. I, I usually have my meals timed. I, I eat about every uh, two hours because for, for all the brethren who follow this channel, you know that I go to the uh, the gym and lift weights a lot. And part of doing that is I got to eat five meals a day to uh, keep you know stimulating you know muscle on my body. And I was in the middle of a prayer during work because I can do that. I work on a computer, and. Um, I was just praying to the Lord, and, and like over two or three hours go by, and I'm working, praying at the same time, talking with the Lord, and then I realize, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten, and rather than go eat, I kind of stay focused on God because there's some, you know, there's prayers that I need answered. So that, right. you know, perfect example of fasting right there. But like Jeremy just said, going a few days or or whatever, and and fasting. Yeah, that's when it gets dangerous. It gets starts to get real bad for your health. I would not suggest that for anybody. See, see, I just pray when I want to pray, right? I don't, I don't fast. No, I won't. I don't believe in fasting. Uh, yeah. And and the Lord does, uh. Answer to when I've called upon him and and I felt really dizzy and I needed to go to uh, the doctor. I asked Jesus, please, please uh, make sure I, I get to the doctor's surgery safely. Uh, it's a 20 minute walk, 15 to 20 minute walk, and then go to the chemist. And then back home, and he's ever always de delivered. I've never fasted. I've called upon him to help me, and and he's uh, uh, d d delivered. Jesus is an awesome Lord and God. It's good for you to go for you know twelve hours, even a day, without fasting. It, it cleanses. It's a cleanse of your body. You know, sure. But, like, when you go too far, then your body starts to eat your own body, basically, you know. And mm -hmm. you don't want that to happen. Like, you know, my wife over here, Amy, back when she was with the street preaching cult like I was, they were forcing her to fast, like, every week about her, uh, about the abominational marriage she was in, you know, at the time with 
a drug dealer. Uh, they were forcing her to fast, you know, like seven days a week and stuff like that. And I mean, it's dangerous. And these cults out there are teaching this garbage and teaching is you need to do this or you're not right with God. And then they'll make it a salvation issue. Like it's a commandment from day. It's not a commandment for the day. What you, what, when you fast with the Lord, that's between you and God. Okay. It's not, it's not something that somebody can tell you to do. What, Fasting is a personal decision I, between you and God. And I won't fast, mate. Yep. And and and, and Jesus, Jesus is loyal, the most loyal. And when I've needed like uh, help, uh, as in if I uh, a couple of times and I asked Jesus to l l look after me, He's delivered every time. Every time, and I've never fasted once. Uh, and the uh, you know the whole because uh, I've heard uh, I've heard so many people try to use fasting and say you know I'm doing it to try to get a vision from the Lord and you know yeah. trying try yeah. to get some sort of thing to prophesy and it's like we're not in that dispensation anymore, buddy. You got the written word of God in your hands. You're not going to get some special vision and and turn into a cult leader. Because, you know, that's how, that's how it costs. Because it's a three-hour video, I just want to see what they say after. Right, we go to the 35-minute part. I just want to see what they say. It's just mean. It's just terrible to say, oh, that God calls people dogs. He has every right to do what he wants. Yeah. Don't, but don't try to judge God like that. Mm -hmm. If he says you're a dog, you're a dog. Absolutely. You know? There's nothing you can do about that. And he calls every one of us He calls every one of us uh, worthless. He calls every one of us all these names. And I mean, you know, Romans chapter three talks about, you know, this you know, sinful man and that our feet are swift to shed innocent blood. Okay. And you know, our tongue is a world full of iniquity. Who can know it? You know, and just like our hearts is desperately is deceitful and desperately wicked, who can know it? I mean, mm -hmm. this is from God. God says this about you. Yeah. Okay. Your righteousness, your goodness that you have is filthy rags. Exactly okay? right. That's Isaiah sixty four. Um, everyone is not good enough for he heaven. Salvation is a gift, right? See, uh, you have salvation wrong. Uh, J Jeremy Breaker has salvation correct. I do know faith in his shed blood. Oh, it's all about him, not not what we've got to do. Verse six, and yeah. uh, your righteousness is filthy rags. That's what God says. Every little good thing that you do, God sees that as a filthy rag. Okay. Only goodness that we have comes from him. In ourselves, we do nothing. Okay? And that is the cold, hard truth that nobody wants to accept. They want to believe that man's good in some shape, form, or fashion when they're not. All men are wicked. Mm -hmm. So, anything else you want to say to that? I want to go to the hour mark. About there, something like that. Stuff and they'll butcher Romans chapter 9 through 11. Um, you know, I mean, it goes along with easy believism and stuff like that. And we'll talk about other things with hyper dispensationalism. But the main thing I know about hyper dispensationalism is like they, they butcher Romans chapter 9 verse 10 and mm -hmm. um, try to say you don't have to pray, you know, and stuff like that. And um, it's, it's quite it's quite a retarded view of the scriptures. And I heard this. Uh, Ed Venning has got pr 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 Romans n uh, 9, 10 to, to 13 correct. You don't, mate. Right? So, so yeah, yeah, it's all about trusting the blood. And, and I've never heard you say, mate, trust in the blood. Break has got salvation right. You don't. I'm going to an hour and a half. Right. I mean, it's going to be a horror film in real life. And how are you going to escape it? 
Are you going to take the mark of the beast and conform to the devils? Or are you going to accept Jesus Christ in that time period? Because a lot of people are going to go in that time period because they they don't want to they don't see the proof of God today, you know, because they want to live this fantasy that things are going to continue as they are. But what are you going to do when the world's going crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. right. all true. Yeah. And so, uh, Saya says, says, I'm I'm saying it's good that my kids can have a peaceful life. Well, Sias, you know, you're you're the one I'm talking to right now. I'm talking about you and your personal sins against God. You know, you need to get saved. Get saved right now. And if you don't want to get saved, that's that's you. Then leave this video and go do something else. It's that simple. Yep. I mean, you seem reasonable, Sias. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you. A lot of people that come in these groups that you know don't want to. They're they're proclaimed atheists or whatever. They just they're using nasty and they just curse like crazy. You know. See, I mean, see, I asked Jesus into my life hundreds of times, mate. So many times, right? And now, now I don't ask it anymore, and I just trust in the blood. I don't like the bloodless gospel, but I've never heard you, Jeremy, um, uh, preach, preach the blood of Jesus. Never once. Never once. So I don't know if you are saved. I truly don't. Right, I, I want to go to Bible Berean. Because I'm I'm sick of it, this guy, um, of uh, J Jeremy. Ah, uh, right. And I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 47 of John chapter 6. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting 30. life. John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. Right, is, is the Son of God. So, if you're reading the modern translations, I strongly suggest you get rid of it because that verse is completely omitted. Only the King James Bible got it right when it's in there. Yep. The second example of uh, of this is the Philippian jailer, and we'll read Acts chapter sixteen and verses twenty seven through thirty four. And I do believe faith alone Acts in Christ 16, alone for salvation. Uh, twenty seven to thirty four. In fact, might as well begin with verse twenty five. Acts chapter sixteen and beginning with verse twenty five. And at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praise unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and, he, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took the he and he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. 
Okay, good. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus spoke these words concerning the rule of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 16 and verses 7 through 11. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the Prince of this world is judged. The Holy Spirit brings conviction in the hearts of lost sinners when they hear the gospel being preached. We see in the examples of both the Ethiopian eunuch and the Philippian jailer that they were under Holy Spirit conviction that led them to salvation by faith alone in Christ. Second, it is true that the devils believe. However, here's a very important question. Are they putting their trust in Christ for salvation? No. Absolutely not. Another thing is the fact that the Lord Jesus did not come to die, did not come to earth to die for devils. He came to die for human beings like you and me. Yep. He became one of us in his incarnation. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. The point is that James was using the example of the devils to convey the idea that in the context of Christian living, faith alone is not enough. As followers of Christ, we should live out our faith on a daily basis. Faith without works is dead. I want to repeat it again so, every, so it can all sink in. In the context of Christian living. Living, yep. Faith alone is not enough. We need to put our faith in Christ yep. into practice and live it out on a daily yep. basis. So James was certainly not contradicting the Apostle Paul. In fact, the Apostle Paul said these words that are in agreement with James. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Philippians chapter 2 and verses 12 through 15. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. I can't help but be reminded of these words of the blessed Son of God that are in agreement with both Paul and James. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Folks, it is so crucial to understand context when we study God's Word. Because if we don't, we can make the Bible say anything we want it to say. And that will lead to false doctrine and satanic heresies. 
such as Lordship Salvation. Yep. We've seen that the Lord Jesus Christ is the first witness against Brian Denlinger, that faith alone in him for salvation is enough for lost sinners to be saved. The Apostle Paul is the second witness. And, and, J Jeremy, you are a Lordship Salvationist with Denlinger. And now we come to the third witness, the Apostle John. For Denlinger to say that faith alone in Christ alone for salvation is not enough for lost sinners to be saved is to call the Apostle John a liar. John outlived all the apostles, and not only was he an eyewitness to the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, but he was known at, he was known also as the disciple whom Jesus loved. As we take a closer look at what he had to say about faith alone in Christ alone for salvation, we will see that they are 100% in agreement with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Apostle, and the Apostle Paul. John chapter 20 and verses 30 to 31. This is the key verse, key passage of scripture in the entire gospel of John. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. John chapter 3 and verse 36. He that believeth on him, excuse me, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. First John chapter 3 and verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. 1 John chapter 5 and verses 10 through 13, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, yep. that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Glory to his name. Yep. It needs to be repeated again, folks. The King James Bible never presents the words belief or believe as simply head knowledge or mental assent. They are presented as, as a firm conviction that can only be brought about by the Holy Spirit. Yep. We have, we have the record. Right here, folks. This is the record right here. We have the record that God gave of His Son. And when we preach the gospel, the true gospel, which is salvation by faith alone, in, in Christ, Christ alone, alone, to lost sinners, sinners, the Holy Spirit brings conviction. Yay. It is not our job to convince lost sinners. That belongs to the Holy Spirit. Our job is just, it's to just simply preach the truth of God's word and let the Holy Spirit bring not only conviction, but also faith in the hearts of those who believe. For Paul said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In his high priestly prayer, the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 17 and verses 20 and 21, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle John all testified to this crucial Bible doctrine that salvation is only, only by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And clearly exp expose Brian Denlinger as a lying heretic for calling the true gospel satanic. And that is the opinion. And, and Jeremy, you follow Denlinger, right? And Den Denlinger is sickening to me. Enemy of Satanism. And that a lost sinner who just simply believes in Christ for salvation is not enough for one to be saved. Absolutely sickening. Yep. That'll do for for, for me for for for, for t t today. Uh, th th thank you. Um, early in the video, Jeremy uh, was talking about f fasting and 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 God answers prayers. Um, I've never fasted in in my life. And the Lord has always answered my prayers. Um, the God of the Bible is so loyal. Um, uh, last year, my dad was so, so sick. He was so thin. Uh, um, all he was was skin and bone. Um, and getting worse every week he was just so thin and it was cruel just keeping him alive he wasn't saved and my dad sadly wasn't interested in the Lord anyway uh, so I just prayed to, to the Lord Jesus um, to uh, uh, just um, not let him suffer anymore, um, and and for him uh, maybe at the latest uh, uh, have him die um, around Easter last year, um, and um, the the uh, Tuesday after Easter of uh, twenty seventeen. Uh, uh, five, five in the morning, or maybe six in the morning that they called me. Uh, but uh, five in the morning, he passed away. Uh, the, the the nursing home rang me. Uh, it was a shock. Um, of course, Easter in twenty seventeen was uh, the Easter. Um, was on, on in in um, April, so so um, I love Dad. I miss Dad. I'm sorry to Jesus that my dad didn't want anything to do with the Lord Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus w w with all my heart, um, and it's sad that. My dad's in hell right now, but it was his choice, his choice. Um, so God does answer prayer, and, and, and it doesn't mean someone has to fast or not fast. I've never fasted in my life. I don't want to, and I won't ever fast. Thank you.